Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name is Jenna Lee and I am so excited to have you here and to share with you a bit of our story. It might be a little unusual how we came to be here. I'm going to take you through our week as I'm simplifying and organizing what we're cooking for dinner and tell you how we came to be here. We did not always live like this. It started a few years back with one profound thought that came to my mind and it changed the whole direction of our lives. One evening I was taking my kids to swimming lessons we lived in the suburbia. We had backyard chickens and always dreamt of fruit trees and land. But we were quite content living in our suburban neighborhood. And I thought that we would stay there forever. Well, one evening while I was at my son's swim practice, I was listening to all the moms talk about how busy their six-year-olds were. And the thought came to my mind, you don't have to live this way. And it stuck with me. That evening I sat down with my whole family around the dinner table and I asked them the question. I said, we get to choose how we want to live. Do you all want to live this schedule, this lifestyle? Would you like to live like this forever? Because we could leave, we could go buy land, we can choose a slower pace of life. And right in that very moment, a seed was planted, a seed that I knew would grow into action. The whole family that night resounded with a unified answer to my question and that was yes we want land we want to raise animals we want to live this dream now there were several factors that came into play that brought us to this piece of land here in Missouri things like jobs and housing and timing but this simpler way of life took hold in my heart and it's been an ongoing growing changing thing inside of me my husband and i made a video telling you guys some more details about how we came to buy our little dream farm on an educator's salary and so if you want a little bit more details on that i can link that video down below um it's quite a story and there were lots of miracles, I have to say, that, that came to play. A lot of sacrifices, blood, sweat, and tears. And no matter who you are, you live on planet Earth and no one's story is perfect. And sacrifice is required and hard work is always required um, to make changes. And the same goes for our story. So I'll just pop in and out of speaking to you about our story as I'm doing things around the house, today I'm actually putting together a meal for a friend who had a tough week. I'm making some green Thai curry and I did make a full video on the recipe that I use. I'll tell you a little bit about it here though as well. I always start out my green curry by sauteing some garlic and olive oil and I also saute the curry as well to bring out all of the rich flavors. I'm also going to put together a homemade macaroni and cheese with hidden cauliflower for their kids. I am never quite sure what other people's kids are going to eat and what they will enjoy. And so I thought I would play it pretty safe with some homemade macaroni and cheese. I like using cauliflower when I'm putting together meals for children because it can kind of just blend in there and the flavor is so mild they don't always know it's there. For the Thai curry, you can use just about any Thai curry, red, green, yellow. 
in this basic recipe. But I just start out by sauteing the curry and the garlic together in oil for just a couple minutes, be careful not to burn it. And then I add half of the amount of coconut milk that I'm gonna use in this recipe. Today I'm making a big old batch for their family and ours, so I'm using four cans of coconut milk. Then to the coconut milk, I add all the vegetables that I'm going to be using. Like so many good things, once you know this basic Thai recipe, you can change it in so many ways. But today I'm going to be adding some mushrooms and broccoli and carrots. You could definitely do sweet potatoes and green peppers and whatever you have in your house. It's a really quick and easy, simple dish to put together. Once I've cooked all those vegetables, whether just tender, I add the meat. I do, I throw it in raw and let it cook through. And once that meat is cooked, then I add the second half of the coconut milk. I also add one fourth a cup of sugar, a couple tablespoons of fish sauce or fish oil, and some lime juice. And then for the macaroni and cheese, I'm just putting together a roux here. Just with butter and flour and milk. This is going to be the base for our cheese sauce. And I whisk that all together until it starts to thicken and becomes nice and creamy. And then I add the cheese. I really just do whatever variety of cheeses I have in the house. But today I'm using um, an American cheese, which isn't my favorite cheese. I have to say I don't buy it very often, but it makes a killer macaroni and cheese. So it's good to have on hand for, for cooking and melting and things like that. And then I'm also going to be adding some sharp cheddar cheese. Now you could add some garlic powder, salt and pepper, or whatever other herbs or flavors you want to add. Today I'm keeping it really simple since we are giving this macaroni and cheese away to some friends. My kids absolutely love macaroni and cheese. This is a dish that I make for lunch quite often. I used to always buy the boxed macaroni and cheese and do that like on Sunday afternoons after church or whenever I needed a quick lunch, but I am really trying to cut down processed foods in our home. And so this is my quick macaroni and cheese alternative to a box of macaroni and cheese. And once you do it over and over again, it really becomes so simple that you don't need to buy the box anymore and it tastes a hundred times better. Like most things from scratch. So I'm just going to put all of these yummy dishes um, in containers so they can go. As I'm finishing packaging this meal up for our friends, I want to share with you guys a few points, a few things that we have done to change our lifestyle on our journey to simplicity. One of those things was to be more guarded with our time. When I realized that I didn't want our family to be slaves to the schedule to be gone every night, I realized that we could be in control of our schedules. I know that sounds kind of silly. Of course you're in control of your schedule, but I think we don't really realize how influenced we are by the culture around us. And it's good to stop and think, why do we do the things that we do? And are we really enjoying this? Is this what is really best for our family? A lot of our kids are kind of homebodies and they love to be at home. In fact, we all love being together a lot. We spend a lot of time together. So I wanted to provide more opportunities for us to be able to do things together. So we really choose and pick which activities to participate in. Of course, we still do activities. We still like to do swim and other sports and things. We just don't do them all the time. We choose and pick what we want to do at the times we want to do them. And we try to allow plenty of time to be at home, to be together, to have meals together, 
to learn and to play together and definitely to work together. Real quick, I'll tell you what I am making here. When I'm bringing someone a meal, I've got to bring him some dessert. I love dessert. I think it makes everyone a little bit happier, especially when they're having a rough week. So I made some peanut butter oatmeal cookies, and I thought I would make them a little bit fun for their kids by making them bear cookies. As I have been organizing and going through things, looking for things that I need to donate, things we don't use, I've also noticed that some of the things I use all the time need to be upgraded. My cookie sheets were absolutely disgusting, totally worn out. And I have a tendency to just keep using the things that I have until they're completely worn out. I realized I needed to be a grown up about things. And since I'm constantly videoing what's in the kitchen, I needed to do a little bit of upgrade. So I upgraded my baking sheets here and I love this chevron design that they have because it allows for a more even bake. They're non-stick. It's easier to bake with and I'm absolutely, absolutely loving them. So I will put a link for my new bakeware down below. I'm also trying to simplify by buying quality things for my home. Not a bunch of things, but just a few purposeful and quality things. So if you need to upgrade your bakeware or kitchenware also and want to do it with high quality products, you can go to kuihousewares.com. You can use my code PIONEER10 to receive 10% off your first order and you can feel great about supporting a kitchen store that's actually run by a family here in the U.S. I hope you enjoy them as much as I do. Go pay them a visit. Don't these teddy bear cookies look adorable? It's amazing how doing just a couple simple steps can make something feel so special. Rolling out some ears and a nose and putting chocolate chips for eyes and a nose. Our kids absolutely loved it. And I think I'll be doing this much more often in the future. I'll put the link to this recipe down below. I did add a little bit more flour just because I wanted these cookies to sit up and see the shapes of their nose and ears a little bit better. But like I said, I'll put the link to the recipe down below so you can make some teddy bear cookies with your family as well. This is another handy little tool. This is actually for carrying out pies, but I'm just gonna flip it over and fill this container with all of our cookies so we can send them out to our friends. You can also find this little nifty tool at kuihousewares.com. I have so many projects that I want to tackle this week as far as organization goes, especially with the holiday stuff. So I'm making dinner really early on this day by putting together our favorite Italian soup. So I thought I would share this recipe with you. It's one of those basic recipes that I make and I alter depending on what ingredients we have in the house. So to start this basic Italian soup, I'm just browning one pound of hamburger. 
I'm also going to saute it with one whole chopped onion. Then I'm gonna add some diced garlic in here as well. And this is pretty much the basis for this very simple soup. Probably my favorite veggies to put in the soup are carrots and celery. Um, with whatever else we have, I don't have any celery on hand, so I am putting in a green bell pepper. And then I plan to add the carrots and some mushrooms and whatever else I can find. To give it that Italian flavor, I'm going to add a couple tablespoons of Italian seasoned herbs, some salt and some pepper, and a couple tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce. And then I'm going to add um, a big old jar of tomatoes here. These are just crushed tomatoes. I think if you get the, is it 24 or 32 ounce can? I'm sure some of you guys are going to tell me exactly what it is. The big old can or jar of tomatoes. And then I'm going to add some water and let this simmer here on the stove. The other day I made this exact recipe with some noodles. The other day I made this exact recipe, but I added some noodles to it. You also could add some frozen or dried tortellinis to this soup and that would be delicious as well. Just simmer the soup here on the stove for 30 minutes and then add your pasta the last five minutes. Today though, I'm just gonna add some white beans to the soup and just let it simmer here on low on the stove so that it will be all done for dinner time by the time I'm done with my projects. I'm also adding some torn kale to the soup. I love adding winter kale to all of my soups and stews this time of year. I love the nutrients that it adds to our soups and it cooks up nicely in a soup. It's just a good way to sneak in more vegetables. So my big plan was to tackle the Christmas stuff and organize it but before I wanted to do that I just felt like I needed to finish organizing some things that I already started over the holiday break and that was our clothing so I put together several bags of clothes that our kids grew out of I also sifted through Jared and I's clothes got rid of some things that we just haven't been wearing this winter season I feel like living years and years in Wyoming we just have a humongous winter wardrobe and we don't use all of it here in Missouri. It's just a shorter season. So I plan to take all of these bags over to our thrift store, our donation center, and put them to good use there. And I'm just slowly putting away holiday stuff this year and getting rid of things that we just don't need. It just seems a little excessive. So I just really took my, my time this year. I thought it was also a good time to go through the books under the coffee table. This is an area in our home that gets a little out of hand. This is a gathering space. We relax here in the evenings. We read books. We pull up this coffee table and work on our computers here. So it gets a lot of use and it gets out of hand really quickly. So I have to often take time to reorganize it, go through it, see what we're using and what doesn't need to be here anymore. Just making sure that it's quite relevant. And I'm doing the same for my magazines. I like to pull out magazines that are seasonal and put away the ones that are not in season. I kind of collect some favorite magazines, Eating Well, Country Living are a couple of my favorites. And I hang on to those for recipes that are relevant to the season. I find that the world really is craving simplicity. There is a reason why slow living is a buzzword, something that you see online or that is talked about quite often. And you see a trend of people flocking to the country, um, buying farmland, or just the desire to grow gardens and all those things. And I really think there's something to it. There's a reason why we are craving simplicity in our lives. And I think it's because we have so much at our fingertips. We can pretty much here where we live, have access to whatever it is that we want and need at the store. 
online, we can order just about anything to our homes. And so we do have access to everything, but just because we have access to everything doesn't mean that we absolutely should have everything or that we need everything. And so it, there's a need to declutter, there's a need to organize, and we have to be a little bit more guarded and particular about what we bring into the home and what we keep in the home. So that's definitely another way to to use this idea of simplicity. I just had to share with you this messy taking down of the tree. Holy smokes, I love me a fresh Christmas tree, but this Christmas tree has been sitting here for quite some time and the needles are just dry as can be. And now I have made myself a good old mess to clean up all of these pine needles, which are too large to be sucked up through the vacuum. So anyway, this was a fun mess to take care of, but um, I love real Christmas trees so much that I think it was worth a sacrifice. I feel like this is a perfect analogy of how simple living can sometimes be. Going back to the basics and living in a more nostalgic and natural way is not always easier. You know, it's definitely easier to put up a fake Christmas tree. Um, it's easier to buy your milk from the store than to have a milking cow. It's easier to buy your bread from the store than learn how to make it yourself. But that's really beside the point of simple living. And that point is really self-sufficiency, knowing how to live in a simpler way and actually putting simpler ingredients into our bodies. This way of simple eating and simple living has a more peaceful effect on our bodies. And I think that's really what everyone is craving is a more simple diet, a life without preservatives, a life without all the extra stuff. So now that all that Christmas gear is organized and put away, it was kind of my incentive to be able to start fresh and redecorate the mantle. This is where I get to play with my house and this is really fun for me. So I'm just cleaning off the mantle, giving it a good dusting because it always needs a good dusting. Around this old wood burning stove, it gets filthy with wood and dust and ash. And so every turn of the season, it needs a good cleaning. I ordered some prints from Etsy. This is my cheap hack. I'm sure you've seen it before for freshening up the art. I wanted to add some florals. I don't decorate with a lot of florals, with a lot of pinks and reds, but since Valentine's Day is right around the corner, I wanted to put some florals on the mantle, but I felt like I needed to add some floral art. So I printed these off, just this little vintage floral print and this really cute duck. And I'm using repurposed frames that I picked up from the thrift store which I got for hardly anything at all. So overall, the prints cost a couple bucks to order from Etsy. They cost a couple more bucks to print. And overall, it's just a really inexpensive way to freshen up the art to add that vintage flair that I'm looking for. And you can print out in various sizes. So I have added this vintage art and I bought this little floral garland. I'm filling roses with Valentine's Day just around the corner. I'm decorating with white roses. I picked up some red and some pink as well. This little vase is from the thrift store. In fact, everything that you see here on the mantle, including this beautiful original oil painting, is either from an antique store or from a thrift store, including this cute little lamp. This pink lamp is a vintage piece that didn't come with a lampshade. And so I went to go find a lampshade at Walmart and the lampshades that would fit this lamp were the same price as actually buying a lamp. So I decided to buy those other lamps as well and maybe use those in the boys room. And I'm borrowing this lampshade to go on this pink floral lamp that I thought would be perfect for the season. I do have a pair of these pink floral lamps and I couldn't decide if I wanted to put up one or two. I've been reading in this blue chair here in the corner in the mornings 
and I love the idea of adding a cozy little lamp. If you think I should add the second one and have two lamps here on the fireplace, put down in the comments below. Let me know what you think. But here is my fresh new look going forward with the rest of winter and for Valentine's Day. I feel like it's so romantic. If you walk away with anything today, I hope it is with courage. Courage to steer your life in the way that you want to live. Courage to slow down in a fast paced world. I'm here every week creating content on restoring home, family, and spirit as I'm restoring homemaking skills. I hope to see you next time. Love you lots.